morning students today we will start about uh, uh, and discuss uh, the grand uh, the gibbs canonical ensemble and here uh, the the three variables that i have chosen to uh, keep constant are the number of particles in the system the generalized force j and the temperature t okay so examples of uh, such a system are uh, you know an ideal gas uh, at some constant values of n p and t. So, I have taken the generalized uh, force as pressure p. Okay. So, j is the generalized force So, the system has, uh, has to do work against this generalized force in some sense. You could also take uh, magnetic systems uh, or, you know, in, in some uniform magnetic field, uniform field. So, that would be n, b and t at some constant uh, number of spins, magnetic field b and uh, temperature t. So, in this case I have taken the, uh, the generalized force to be magnetic field. So, uh, in, in, in contrast to the canonical ensemble where we allowed only energy to be exchanged in order to keep temperature constant, for this ensemble I must allow for an extra extensive variable to, ex, to, to fluctuate. The extensive variable that I am allowing to fluctuate corresponds to volume if I want to keep pressure constant. So, there is a fluctuation of volume in the system and if I want to keep magnetic field constant then I must allow for fluctuation in magnetization. Okay, so, V here is the, is the volume and M stands for magnetization. Please note that both volume and magnetization are extensive variables which means they scale with system size. If you increase the volume by um, uh, uh, you know uh, if you want to keep the density constant and you increase the number of particles by some factor lambda then you have to increase volume by the same uh, factor to keep the density constant. The same applies to magnetization. So, a larger system will have larger magnetization. So, let us draw a schematic here to take an example. So, this is going to be my system and I have taken the case of an ideal gas. Let us say I am taking the case of an ideal gas okay, in contact with a reservoir. Okay, and uh, let us say that this reservoir allows uh, you know the system is allowed to exchange energy with the reservoir. So, the system is exchanging energy with the reservoir in order to keep uh, the temperature T constant okay. and uh, Similarly, you can allow exchange of volume to keep uh, pressure constant okay. and since we are not allowing uh, any number of particles to escape the system or reservoir, N is naturally conserved. Okay. So, that is the meaning of uh, uh, keeping n p and t constant. So, this reservoir uh, is basically nothing but uh, a combination of, uh, uh, of a thermostat because it keeps temperature constant in the system and it is also acting as a barostat which means it is keeping pressure uh, constant. So, that is the reservoir for us a combination of thermostat plus barostat. Now, for such systems uh, you can say that the uh, microstate 
So, let us first uh, describe our, uh, we already know the macro state is uh, n p t, the specified value of the n p n t. Okay. The corresponding micro state, then there are large number of these micro states, they are uh, specified as some mu which is nothing but uh, the set of values of position and momentum. So, these are uh, nothing but the set of values of the position and momentum, but now this is also specified together with the volume of the microstate because at any instant if you come back to the system and uh, observe it, you will see that positions and momentum are you know positions are free to take any values in the box which is the system and the momentum is uh, free to take any values between uh, 0 to infinity, but now you have to also specify the volume of the box because that is fluctuating. So, in the given volume all possible momentum and uh, positions constitute one microstate which is already a large number. Then when the volume fluctuates and becomes a new volume, you have to again allow for all the part particle uh, degrees of freedom to change and those are the microstates in that volume. So, a microstate is jointly specified for a given volume and the set of uh, values of q and p. Okay. So, you have one additional degree of freedom which is the volume of the microstate and that is very important uh, thing to be remembered here. Now, just in the similar uh, spirit, if I want to write down the probability of finding my system in a microstate which is instantly in that particular instant is in volume V of mu, V mu means volume of that microstate. Then I have to say that this is nothing but uh, e to the power minus beta into some energy scale. Now, what is that energy scale? So, let me write down this energy scale. So, before we write down the uh, probability distribution, let us write down the energy scale that is relevant here. So, relevant energy scale here. is not just the total energy that comes from the Hamiltonian. Like in the canonical ensemble, the relevant energy scale was just the energy of the microstate mu. Now, which was basically nothing but for an ideal gas, you could write down this as 1 to n p i square by 2 m. This is not the energy scale. The relevant energy scale is the Hamiltonian for a given microstate plus the pressure volume work that the system has done against the barostat. Okay. So, the system is now constantly trying to you know uh, uh, maintain its uh, uh, you know the its, its pressure. So, uh, there is a P V amount of uh, energy that one must associate with this is not a system which is mechanically isolated. P V work will not be there if the system is mechanically isolated. This system is being constantly you know held at a pressure P and so one must in involve the pressure volume work okay? because the system is not mechanically isolated. So, the pressure volume work has to be there. So, this is my total uh, energy scale now. Okay? So, I must write down my probability of finding the system in a given microstate mu at volume V mu as a Boltzmann factor. Now, the Boltzmann factor here is e raise to minus beta into the energy scale. Okay, the energy scale is now as we have discussed H mu that is nothing but P i square by 2 m summed over all particles if it is an ideal gas plus the pressure volume work which the system has done against the reservoir. This is my Boltzmann factor and I know that this uh, is not a normalized uh, probability uh, uh, density or probability distribution function. I must 
write it with a norm which is nothing but e raise to minus beta h mu plus p of p mu. Now, this makes my probability distribution function properly behaved and I am going to call this denominator as the partition function. But partition function for my NPT system. So, partition function is specified for a macro state. Okay. So, this is a Gibbs canonical partition function. So, you can think of uh, your you can write down your z of NPT, which is nothing but uh, our summation over all micro states e raise to minus beta h mu plus p of uh, v mu as the Gibbs canonical partition function. You can of course, write down an integral version of this that I am going to use uh, in the next lecture, but suppose you can enumerate the number of states this is also a representation nice representation. Of course, uh, before we proceed I am going to call this relevant energy scale as enthalpy okay? because this is energy plus P V and that you know from thermodynamics is an enthalpy. So, in the ensemble of Gibbs where you are controlling pressure in addition to temperature the relevant energy scale is not the total energy itself it is the enthalpy of the system. Okay. So, the Boltzmann factor will not have energy, it will have enthalpy. Okay. So, that is something that you need to uh, keep track of that our energy scale has changed from Hamiltonian to enthalpy. Now, like in the canonical ensemble I wanted to know what is the average value of the energy. Okay. Here I have two quantities that are fluctuating. What are the fluctuating quantities in this system? Okay, in 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 uh, in our Gibbs canonical ensemble. To maintain this macro state, I know there are two quantities that are fluctuating. To maintain temperature, I have to allow for energy fluctuations. So there are two quantities are fluctuating one is energy or I will say the Hamiltonian that fluctuates and there is one more thing that fluctuates to maintain pressure I must allow for fluctuating in the I must allow for fluctuation in the volume. Okay. So, there are two quantities that are fluctuating in my system the Hamiltonian or the energy and volume okay. these are the two fluctuating quantities. And actually when something is fluctuating you would be talking about their averages because the quantities themselves now have no meaning the instantaneous values have no meaning. What you really require is, is the quantity in the thermodynamic limit or the average of this quantity. So, the first average that you can think of is that of uh, volume average. Okay. So, I am going to call V as the average of the instantaneous volume. Okay. So, this is nothing but you have to sample this uh, volume among all the micro states and this is the sampling you sample uh, the instantaneous volume in your probability distribution. So, your probability distribution is uh, P of mu. At v mu. So, this is your probability distribution function and you sum over all mu and v and sample your, your volume this will give you the average volume of the system fine. So, 
Let us uh, proceed with this calculation. This is nothing but uh, summation over all uh, the microstates, the volume of the microstate and your probability density function which is uh, e to the power minus beta and the energy scale which is enthalpy, instantaneous enthalpy. So, h mu plus p v mu, this is the total enthalpy energy scale over your Gibbs canonical partition function. which is nothing but summation over all probabilities, so that this is normalized. So, I can write down this as 1 upon z into to pull out a v mu, all I have to do is basically take a derivative with respect to minus beta p of the of the Gibbs canonical partition function. Okay. So, if you if you want to write down in two steps you can do that. So, I am going to write this as a this is what you would do. So, the summation is overall microstates and uh, for each microstate you have pressure is fixed. So, beta and t are anyway fixed. So, uh, they are uh, independent of the microstate. So, this derivative will go inside the summation and derivate each term and from each term what you will it will pull out is basically a v of mu that is under the summation and you will get the numerator in the previous expression. The denominator is just a z that I have taken outside and this is nothing but uh, 1 upon z d over d minus beta p of uh, the Gibbs canonical partition function. Since beta is anyway a constant here. So, I am going to take it uh, out as uh, minus 1 over uh, beta uh, d z by d p and uh, there is a 1 upon z here. Okay. This is a pressure not a small p, so I am going to use a capital P here. Okay. So, everywhere I have to use a capital P. So, this is nothing but uh, if you look at it is minus 1 over beta uh, d by d p of ln z. So, this is the average volume or the thermodynamic volume of your system. The system is uh, fluctuating in, in, in its volume, but it has some average volume. So, this is the thermodynamic average volume that is computed in terms of the partition function. Okay. Now, you could also um, construct uh, this thermodynamic average volume from thermodynamics. So, I already know from thermodynamics that there is a energy scale which goes by the name of Gibbs free energy. That is specified as uh, enthalpy, thermodynamic enthalpy minus the temperature entry, temperature entropy energy. So, I can write this as uh, E plus P V minus T S, these are all thermodynamic quantities by the way. So, they are already averaged fine. What I am going to do is basically write down volume in terms of thermodynamic uh, variables and compare my equation 1 where I have written thermodynamic volume connected to statistical mechanics. The comparison of these two expressions will reveal yet another bridge between statistical mechanics and thermodynamics. Okay. So, I am saying that you suppose you were doing thermodynamics not statmec, you could still compute the volume of your system by appropriate thermodynamic derivatives. This is what I am going to do now. So, I am going to write down the differential form for this uh, law as uh, d e plus uh, p d v 
plus V d p minus T d s minus S d t. Okay. And here you can substitute from first law, I can write down d e plus t d s, uh, d e plus p d v uh, minus t d s as simply mu d n okay. and the remaining quantities I am going to write down as uh, V d p minus S d t, because from first law of thermodynamics, I already know that the um, total heat given to the system is just a bookkeeping or law of conservation of energy appears as uh, some rise in internal energy plus some pressure volume work uh, minus mu d n some chemical work if you allow n to exchange. Okay. So, if I substitute the value of uh, d e plus p d v minus t d s, it is simply mu d n which is what I have done. Okay. So, now you can look at uh, this differential uh, form of the uh, thermodynamic uh, law and write down what is the value of volume. So, this gives me for volume as uh, d g over d p at constant n n t and this is exactly my system. So, my t n n are constant and I want to see how my Gibbs free energy changes with pressure. So, if I compare this equ equation 2 with uh, equation 1, just look at the left hand side they are both volumes thermodynamic volumes, the right hand side is d g over d p and the right hand side is uh, d g over d p of 1 upon beta ln z. So, I can compute, I can equate my Gibbs free energy with 1 upon beta ln z. So, this is the bridge uh, that connects statmec to thermodynamics. So, the quantity on the right hand side has the information of all the degrees of freedom in a microstate information which is embedded in z that is your partition function you summed over all probabilities to make it normalized. So, it has the information of your microstates your Hamiltonian all the microscopic world information is inside z. The left hand side quantity has nothing to do with it it is just the thermodynamic quantity g that you measure uh, in any um, process um, in for a system in which has very, very large degrees of freedom in the thermodynamic limit. So, this is a beautiful connection similar to the connection that we had in the canonical ensemble. Okay. Recall that uh, for the canonical ensemble, you had this uh, 1 over beta ln z connected to the free energy. So, now what you have here is the the Gibbs free energy not the Helmholtz free energy simply because you now have pressure volume work instead of the total energy or instead of the Hamiltonian. Okay. So, I am going to write down uh, just to remind uh, the audience that this is the how to differentiate because the right hand side is similar no both of them are 1 upon beta ln z. So, this is the partition function for the macro state n p t okay. whereas this is the partition function for the macro state n v t. Please note the distinction here okay. these are different partition functions. Now, we have already computed one average which is volume average we can compute another average which is the average of the enthalpy. Remember our total energy is no longer just the Hamiltonian, it is the Hamiltonian plus P v. So, like I said there are two fluctuating variables, I have already computed uh, 
the average of uh, v. I am now interested in computing the average of uh, h plus p v okay, because that is what is the new energy scale in the problem. Okay. So, so average enthalpy because enthalpy is your new energy scale okay is given as uh, you know you have to take the average of the the energy scale and this will be your uh, average enthalpy i'm calling it as h so this is nothing but uh, so i can write down my h as uh, summation over mu and the volume this is my joint jointly mu and v will represent a microstate i'm summing over all microstates and basically in weighing this variable thermodynamic variable i will going i will take the weight of this uh, variable in this distribution remember our distribution is now uh, jointly specified by the microstate and the volume okay so this is my distribution and in this distribution i am going to sample my variable uh, which is uh, the enthalpy and at the end of the sampling what i'll get is the average value of my variable that i have sampled in this distribution okay so this is going to give me nothing but uh, uh summation over v mu h of uh, the hamiltonian plus p v mu e raised to minus beta h mu plus p v mu over the gibbs canonical partition function which is uh, i'm going to call as z of npt in the sim similar way and since i have to pull out a h plus p mu i am going to take a derivative with respect to the numerator is nothing but the derivative of my partition function with respect to minus beta okay so this is uh, if you look at uh, is nothing but uh, uh, if i pull out a minus sign this is nothing but i'm going to just use a new space here so this is nothing but uh, minus d by d beta of ln z okay and the quantity that i was uh, basically computing was the average enthalpy this was the energy scale this is the energy scale in our npt ensemble and its average value is related to is is directly given as negative derivative of uh, ln z with respect to uh, beta so this z here is nothing but the gibbs canonical uh, partition function now compare this with your uh, canonical result there the relevant energy scale was just the total internal energy or the average of the hamiltonian we obtained it as the average of the hamiltonian and we saw that this is equal to minus d over d beta of ln z look at the beautiful symmetry here this is the same relationship but this z was the canonical partition function whereas the z that is we are in, in the current problem is the gibbs canonical partition function so there is beautiful symmetries here relevant energy being the hamiltonian relevant energy being the enthalpy and its relation to the its relationship with the uh, partition function is symmetric it's exactly the same okay 
So, we are not learning newer newer things, we are just uh, encountering the same thing, but we need to keep track of the uh, relevant energy scales in the problem. Now, once I have uh, determined the average enthalpy, I will be interested in enthalpy fluctuations. You can see where this is going. I computed energy fluctuations in the canonical ensembles and showed that the energy fluctuations in NVT or canonical ensemble are related to heat capacity at constant volume. I am going to show similar to energy fluctuations in canonical ensemble, there is a enthalpy fluctuation in our uh, Gibbs canonical ensemble and it is also related to a material property which is heat capacity at constant pressure. Okay. So, after average enthalpy, I am going to talk about enthalpy fluctuations, okay, because in this ensemble enthalpy fluctuates. How does it fluctuate? Well, of course, I am going to write it as a second cumulant of uh, the enthalpy, okay, which is the measure of uh, the variance in enthalpy or the fluctuations in enthalpy, size of the fluctuations. Well, this is given as uh, the second moment minus square of the first moment. Okay. And uh, let us write it down, it is a very simple calculation, just a little bit tedious. So, please do not uh, uh, you know be discouraged with the expressions that are going to get longer. The calculation is extremely simple and very straightforward. So, the averages here means I am sampling h square in some distribution. So, this is nothing but uh, sampling in our microstates distribution uh, h which is uh, the instantaneous enthalpy is nothing but uh, h mu plus p v mu, but you have to take its square in the distribution uh, p mu v mu that is the first term minus the second term is nothing but uh, the sampling of h which is enthalpy which is nothing but h mu plus p v so this will give me just mod of uh, the enthalpy but i'm going to take a square of this because the second term is the square of the average the quantity inside the bracket is the average enthalpy the outside square is this square okay so next uh, that is inside p Okay. So, now we know that the, our uh, probability distribution function is nothing but I am going to write it uh, since I need I am going to require more space let me shift the equality on the extreme right side left side. So, the first term is nothing but uh, summation mu v mu and uh, I can write this as h mu plus uh, p v mu the whole square e raise to minus beta h mu plus p v mu divided by uh, the Gibbs canonical partition function minus I am going to write down summation over all the microstates
So, the quantity inside the bracket is the average of the enthalpy and there is a square outside this bracket, okay. So, what you can do here now is uh, simply you can write down the first term as nothing but uh, 1 upon z which is I am going to take the denominator outside and the numerator if you carefully see is nothing but uh, the instantaneous enthalpy pulled out twice from the partition function. So, to pull it out once you have to de take derivative with respect to minus beta, to pull it out twice you have to take uh, two derivatives which is uh, nothing but uh, uh, d by d, d square by d beta square of uh, the partition function. So, one derivative with respect to will pull out minus enthalpy, one more derivative will pull out another minus enthalpy. So, minus minus becomes plus and uh, that is your second derivative and here the second term would be you have just pulled out one term. So, it is going to be 1 upon z into d by d beta of uh, the partition function and you square it, okay. So, if you take one derivative with respect to beta, it will pull out a minus h, but look there is a square outside. So, it makes it uh, if you pull, take out the minus sign and square it, it becomes positive. The other minus sign is because of the fact that the entire second term is taken negative, okay, right. What I mean to say is that I could have taken a derivative with respect to uh, minus beta to pull out an edge, but this minus sign taken outside with the square uh, poses no issue. So, I am going to just write it as uh, just d by d beta, okay, if that is your concern, it poses no issue. So, then I can see that this is nothing but uh, d by d beta of uh, 1 upon z dz by d beta. So, if you apply the chain rule, you get the first term minus the second term, okay, because 1 upon z's derivative is minus 1 by z square. And this is nothing but if you look at uh, the quantity in the parenthesis is nothing but uh, d by d beta of uh, ln z. But this should ring a bell in your minds that this quantity is already been calculated. What is this quantity? This quantity is nothing but average enthalpy. So, this quantity was uh, computed as the average enthalpy H, the average of uh, Okay. So, what you are getting here is nothing but uh, d over d beta of uh, the average enthalpy H. So, if you refer, let, us, let me put the equation number, have I named it? No, I have not given an equation number. So, let me give an equation number, we have given 1, 2, 3. So, let us call this as equation number 4. So, this is like uh, refer to equation 4. Beautiful result because what you see in front of you is uh, that the yeah. Is there a minus in missing? Correct. So, this is basically uh, minus of h, so I will pull out a minus h here, okay. So, so I am going to write down uh, just to be just to correct that uh, myself that this is related to
So, I am going to write this as uh, minus of h or minus of both sides I need to put a minus sign. Okay. So, then you can think of it this way that d over d beta is nothing but minus uh, d over uh, d of uh, 1 by k b t of uh, enthalpy which is nothing but uh, if I uh, pull out uh, k b in the numerator this simply becomes k b t square uh, d by d t of uh, your enthalpy. And this enthalpy is uh, temperature derivative is called as the heat capacity at uh, constant pressure. Okay. So, C p here is the is the heat capacity at constant pressure and uh, let me just uh, write down what is C p. C p is the heat capacity at constant pressure. So, the temperature derivative of the energy scale is the heat capacity that we already know, but what we ended up proving is that the quantity that we are computing from the beginning the left hand side is nothing but uh, enthalpy fluctuations. So, these are all enthalpy fluctuations. So, in the end I must write down that uh, the enthalpy fluctuations similar to energy fluctuations in canonical ensemble are related to the heat capacity at constant pressure. So, this is also a quantity that uh, scales with system size. So, this is also extensive. Okay. Remember these are heat capacity not specific heat. So, they are extensive in nature. You can think of uh, this, uh, this variable here h which is enthalpy but that itself is extensive. All the quantities in this are intensive. Okay. So, this is the relationship that is very important and uh, just uh, to recall you know we are not seeing something that is new. Uh, if you recall from your uh, NVT there we had seen that the energy fluctuations are related to energy fluctuations were referred to as the fluctuations in the Hamiltonian. So, there the energy fluctuations in the Hamiltonian was shown to be related to heat capacity at constant volume. Here we are showing that the heat capacity at constant pressure is related to enthalpy fluctuations. So, there is this beautiful uh, correspondence between these two ensembles and uh, that in itself is a beautiful observation you know that if you want to know about the material properties which is heat capacity you can find it out by the fluctuations in the system. So, fluctuations reveal um, a lot more about the properties of the system than we actually think you know. So, here the fluctuations are telling us how the heat capacities are uh, you know uh, what are the heat capacities in the system I, I should say it that way. So, we end the lecture here when we uh, meet in the next class we will talk about uh, some examples um, uh, we will take one discrete example in fact we will take two discrete examples one is the uh, case of an ideal gas uh, one is the case of uh, um, magnetic spins in, the, in a uniform magnetic field that is going to be the case of a discrete uh, degree of freedom example. And I am going to take uh, uh, another example which is a classical ideal gas which is a continuous degree of freedom example uh, both under Gibbs canonical ensemble. So, when we meet in the next class uh, we will carry forward and uh, discuss these two examples.